Hi, this is Josh. I got this Titan board recently from a friend and unfortunately it didn't work, which I diagnosed down to the uh, flash chip there being defective. I was able to dump a working Titan and then replace the flash chip and flash that bitstream back to the new chip and now this Titan works. So, given that I had a working Titan, I thought, well, what can I do with that? So, here is what I have called the Franken XEDK. It's an XEDK, but not. You can see it is running on the uh, final Xenon board there. And we'll take a look here at the chips now. Microsoft did repair this board with a Korean Y1 GPU, so it's nice and reliable. Now for the CPU, I have soldered on one of these Waternoose DD1X CPU ES. It's a 2.8 gigahertz chip. No 1BL in there. Had to do a few other things on the board, but I won't go over now. We've got a 64 megabyte NAND flash installed there. I also added the 5P0 LED um, for 5P0 cell. I am gonna add the yellow LEDs here, but I don't have any more, so I'm waiting on those to come. And I also had a check stop back here. Now the actual XDKs have 12 volts uh, LED there, but I think check stop is more useful, so that's what I have stuffed there. So I'm going to go ahead and get some heat sinks and we'll show it to you. I want to quickly stress that no XEDK was harmed in the making of this project. All my research came from this actual 007 console here and all of the parts that I ended up installing onto this final Xenon were sourced from China, not pulled from any board. So there was no XEDK harmed in the making of this project. All right, I have the system on my bench with thermal paste, heat sinks, and a fan. We got the Titan hooked up. This wire is simply supplying power from V memport to the Titan. The other wire is our JTAG to our CPU. I have the standard dip switches off, off, on, off. You can see that my bodge wire added LED is enabled via V5P0 cell light. So let's go ahead and boot the system. You can see we get check stop, we get our Titan LEDs. And you can see it is functioning properly. You can see the fans are at full because there is no SMC config defined uh, thermal profiles. So we have to be sure that the heat sinks are attached properly so that the chips don't burn up because there's no protection for thermals when running on this old SMC and SMC config. So one thing is you may notice I got my wired controller out because if we try to sync a wireless controller just like on a real XEDK, it won't work because there's a protocol difference in the SMC. So I have to use wire which is just a regular USB. So here we are in the X-Shell launcher. You can see everything is working. You know, we can do all kinds of cool stuff here. We can go in a dashboard and uh, you can see it is functioning properly. Now, if you're wondering how such an old version is working, when I mentioned there was a revised GPU, the exact version on here, the X817791, is just a revised version of GPU Y1 and still uses the same A32 design as the chip found on the final Xenon on launch day. As a result, it is supported as the A32 chips are supported in this 1838. I've not tried older kernels yet. All right, so I tried to downgrade it to 1640 just to see if it would work. And here is the result. I did have to add a hard drive to do that. There's no boot anim, which is kind of funny, but it just kind of shows up in XShell. And uh, yeah, 1640 runs. So we can head to the dashboard, that all works, but yeah, let's go to the dashboard. Here you can see the old beta dashboard, really cool. And it's kind of funny that there's placeholder text here. And we've got her down to 1538, no problem. It seems that everything is working great and I'm very happy with this project. I really am very glad this worked. It took a, quite a bit of a staring at an XEDK to uh, figure some of this out. I'm very, very glad that this is finally up and running. So I hope you enjoyed and have a good 2023.